Welcome guys, I'm Exhausta and in today's video I'm finally revealing my magnifying build for both low budget and high budget. Now we are already 3 days into the new league and I think this is the perfect moment to transition from your leveling character to your magic find character, which would be much much better for mapping. Now uh, first off I want to showcase my magic find academy strategy guide which is my giant Google spreadsheet uh, with everything Magic Find related and mapping related. This is the page for the Magic Find build. As you can see, it's very complete. It contains all the information you need uh, to, for getting started. And also these handy trade links uh, just to get what you need as fast as possible. Now uh, to the gear. Uh, Magic Find build are uh, quite hard to gear early on, but uh, there are some unique items that you can use to start with. First off, the Wind Reaper bow. Now, Wind Reaper is an elemental bow that, which grants 15% increased quantity of items dropped by slaying frozen enemies and up to 30% and increased rarity of items dropped by slaying shocked enemies. Now, this bow can help you until, let's say, white and yellow maps, but when you want to play red maps and uh, delirium maps more so, you need a bow that has more damage than that. You need a rare bow and you can choose between uh, crafting an elemental or a physical damage bow. In my opinion, physical damage magic find build are in a better position right now, uh, but this may change in the future. As for the modifiers you want to look for, uh, you have plus two arrows, crit chance, crit multi, double damage, and attack speed. The best bases, in my opinion, are spine bow because it has the highest base crit chance, and also fixed bow because it has a lot of attack speed. Uh, as for the body armor, uh, you can use grids and brace, which provides up to 15% quantity and 50% rarity of items found. This is a very good magic find chest, but it comes with uh, three drawbacks. You have less fire resistance, lightning resistance, and movement speed. Now, uh, remember that you can use some cool harvest and chance to help with your attributes. You can get strength, intelligence, or if your attributes are already fine, you can get the harvest and chant for life. If you want to val the chest, I recommend trying to get the plus one level to gems and 40% uh, increased damage. Uh, then, when you are going for the end game, you can use a rare body armor uh, with a double influence shaper plus under. The perfect base in this case uh, is Assassin's Scarp, when if you want 3% movement speed or Astral Plate for 12% elemental resistances. Uh, you should look for mainly two modifiers, which are socketed gems are supported by level 20 item rarity and attacks have plus 2% critical strike chance. Both of these are elevated modifiers that are crafted using the orb of dominance. Um, and then you can take, it's very simple, you can take two magic bases containing these two elevated modifiers and you merge them together with the Wagner's Orb. Once you've done that, what you can do is simply block the suffixes uh, that you have just obtained and keep reforging caster with uh, uh, your harvest bench until you get, you can apply an additional curse along with maximum life. Uh, the gloves are one of the weakest parts of our build uh, Satima's touch only provides up to 10% quantity and pretty much nothing else. You can improve these gloves by a lot uh, if you can get the right corruption though. You can use uh, a Valorb to obtain elemental weakness, uh, attack with chance or a frenzy charge. Goldwim are other rather weak uh, boots with only 10% movement speed and uh, just a bunch of fire resistance but they come with 20% increased quantity of items found, which is very good for league play. Uh, you can use the, you can apply the lab enchant for 16% attack speed 
and eventually a corruption for 10% additional movement speed. The right belt for the build early on, when you can't afford anything better, is a viscous leash, which is a heavy belt, and this really helps you getting your, uh, your strength requirement covered. Uh, it provides 5% increased quantity of items found, up to 40% cold resistance, and 1% increased rarity of items found per 15 Rampage kills. Now, Rampage is a very interesting mechanic that makes your character more powerful, uh, providing you with special effects um, after you kill monsters. Uh, the counter can go up to 1000, so you can scale your rarity of items accordingly. Uh, the important thing is to keep killing monsters or the counter will basically run, run out. It's worth mentioning that for every 20 stacks you're getting 1% increased movement speed and 1% increased damage, which is very good. Um, if you are high budget, you can afford a headhunter, uh, which comes with more strength, more life, and more importantly, when you kill a rare monster, you gain its modifiers for 60 seconds. This is one of the most iconic items in Path of Exile. Uh, you can use the catalyst, the intrinsic catalyst, to get more attributes uh, and uh, double corrupt the hunter uh, if you got, uh, uh, if you're brave enough to get a 30% item rarity, crit multi, hatred effect, or attack speed. These, in my opinion, are the best mods that you can get there. Then we have the low budget rings, which would be the Ventus Gamble. And these are also high budget rings in a way, because Ventus Gamble comes with uh, a lot of uh, different rolls. You can get negative rolls or positive rolls. You can roll negative or positive quantity, rarity, fire, cold, and light resistance. So basically this ring can either be trash, complete trash, or extremely good. Uh, for very good rolls on this ring, uh, there, there could be a high, high price tag. So try to prioritize the right mods here. In my opinion, the most important mods to prioritize are quantity of items found, uh, you must get positive rarity of items found, and make sure that you can get at least some good elemental resistances to cap your build. Uh, the most important resistance, in my opinion, is Lightning Rest, because we can already get some fire resistance from the gold wooden boots and some cold resistance for the Biscos Leash, at least before we have a Headhunter. Um, the Catalysts are very useful here, because they, increase, uh, they can increase the resistances uh, for both rings, and uh, this can really help when capping. So for the amulet, we use the ascetic, both for low budget and high budget. The ascetic uh, is a very powerful magic file item because it provides up to 100% increased rarity of items found with a normal item equipped, and up to 15% quant with a magic item equipped. Now, uh, you can equip both of them, or just one, but in my opinion, uh, the best slots for a normal item is the Quiver, and the best slot for a magic item is the Helmet. And we will speak about that in a moment. Uh, for the Anointment, you have two choices here. We have Sovereignty, uh, which would be ideal for Tornado Shot, um, which is the best skill against single target. Uh, Sovereignty basically gives you 12% increased mana reservation efficiency. Vengeance Cascade is more useful for Lightning Arrow. This is a recently buffed passive notable, uh, which provides 15% attack speed, but on top of that, it provides the Nemesis Ring effect. Uh, basically, Prajitas will return to you at the end of their movement. So I will show you right now what that means in practice. If you're using Lightning Arrow, Whenever you shoot the projectiles, as you see, they go back to you and you will be clearing the bottom part of the screen, but also the top part of the screen. Uh, the helmet is uh, the, ideal, the ideal slot to get your magic item, because you can put 24% increased variety of items found as a prefix, and you can get 45% increased variety of items dropped by slaying rare or unique enemies as a suffix. Uh, which would be a crafted suffix. 
Uh, also, you can put some uh, Eldritch implicits. Uh, my, I, my choice is 12% increased mana reservation efficiency and 26% reduced mana cost of attacks. Uh, a great enchant for our build is Tornado Shot, fire some additional secondary projectile, but this is kind of high budget. Uh, this makes the price a lot, lot higher. Uh, for the low budget option, we also we can use a normal item in the Quiver slot, and uh, the ideal corruption here is bow attacks fire an additional arrow. Now, you might think that this is a rather expensive item, but the truth is that you can pretty much self-craft it for cheap. Just put all of the normal bases on your loot filter, then um, you can simply val all of the normal quivers you get. And one in 100, you will get it. It's about 1% chance to get this implicit modifier. Then we have the low budget jewels. Uh, split personality is a great way to um, get your attributes. Uh, my personal choice is getting plus five strength and plus five to intelligence. Uh, now I will show you my path of building to demonstrate how big of a difference uh, can make this jewel can make. So. As you see, uh, what I've done here is putting my split personality on bottom of the tree inside some clusters and make a very, very long path up here until we get uh, to the bottom part of the tree. Uh, see, and since we have two split personality, you can see my intelligence and strength are pretty much covered with ease. Now, these items may not be that easy to get early on but if you really don't know how to fix your build simply get thief's craft and prowess that's the simplest way to do that then we have lionized foe melee and melee weapon type modifiers in radius are transformed to bow modifiers and the perfect place to put this kind of jewel is right here on the top side of uh, our tree and that is because the dagger nodes here are extremely powerful. They have 18% increased crit chance and 14% multi in, in each of these small passives. And the um, passive notable is also extremely good, 30% crit chance and multi, and also 100% crit chance against enemies on full life. Very, very powerful. And finally, the dagger mastery is also great. Critical strikes have calling strike. And you might understand that it is very, very important to get your critical strike chance to, um, uh, to the highest value possible. Going back to the jewels, this is a watcher's eye you can get. Uh, the cheapest version you can buy is one with increased critical strike chance while affected by wrath. Uh, going to the large cluster jewels, uh, I recommend getting uh, Bow jewels with eight passives and looking for the notables Feed the Fury, Martial Prowess, and one extra notable to uh, make it so that the cluster jewels have the right disposition of the passive notables. You want the Feed the Fury and Martial Prowess to be the closest to the small passive notable, the small passive point here. Uh, Feed the Fury is basically leech related. 30% increased damage while leeching, 15% attack speed while leeching. Uh, martial prowess is more about accuracy, attack damage, and attack speed. Now, uh, going to the medium cluster jewel, uh, we have the um, crit medium clusters. Uh, they come with four passives. And they and you should look for two notables in particular, which would be pressure points and precise retaliation. And I'll show you right quick right now what they do. Precise retaliation grants 60% increased critical strike chance. If you have it blocked, we don't have a shield, so we always uh, we never block. Uh, and then we have pressure points, 30% increased crit chance, and your critical strikes have. 5% chance to deal double damage. Very powerful passive notable here. Going to the next, we have small clusters as well. 
uh, with uh, the mana base, two passive points, in, um, you should look for 6% increased mana reservation efficiency of skills as a base, and then get one of these notables, uncompromising, spiteful presence, or electrocutting presence, depending on your hours of choice. Uncompromising reduces by 50% the uh, mana reservation of uh, determination. Uh, spiteful presence is for hatred, and electrocuting presence increases mana reservation efficiency for wrath by 50%. Going to high budget jewels, uh, you introduce the interrogation, uh, which adds the so called secrets of suffering keystone. Uh, this keystone basically, basically replaces the normal ailments of freeze, ignite, and shock with brittle, scorched, and sapped. Now, these ailments are very, very powerful because brittle provides up to 6% critical base, uh, base critical strike chance, which is really, really a lot. Uh, then we also have scorched and sapped, which provide increased damage against your most the enemy monsters, and uh, less damage dealt by the same monsters. Uh, very powerful keystone there. Then we have the Tread of Hope, uh, the massive Tread of Hope, which is very, very expensive on market. Um, it creates basically a, a, an entire ring uh, of uh, passive notables that you can allocate. I am going to showcase it real quickly. Here is the massive ring. Uh, inside, you can allocate any passive notable you want, and there are a lot of good targets if you select this position here, close to the uh, Supreme Ego Keystone. Uh, there is the aspect of the links that I like, 20% increase attack damage, 5% movement speed, 20% crit, 10% uh, elemental resistance penetration. Then we have a hired killer, 7% increase maximum life is a lot, Recover 2% life on kill, also very handy. We have reservation efficiency. We have some lead, if hours effect. Uh, Blood Siphon, incredibly good. 10% increase maximum life, 20 strength. And we also have others such as this one, 4% increased chance and 20% increased physical damage. You see, there are a lot of notables that you can get. Um, you are really free of experimenting a bit with this one. Then we can use the Forbidden Flesh and the Forbidden Flame jewels. These are jewels dropped from the Eldritch bosses and uh, uh, they basically grant you the ability to allocate uh, a specific ascendancy passive point. Now, uh, this requires some planning. Uh, we are using a die ascendancy. We are taking far shot, endless munitions, ricochet, and gathering wings. Um, you can swap the ricochet for the focal point if you need more damage against uh, rare monsters specifically. This is something you should really consider. And uh, another option is also to get wind ward to get a bit less damage, but it's not something I personally like. As for the Forbidden Flame and Forbidden Flesh notable, I think that, you wish that we should look to the Pathfinder, which has been recently reworked. We can use, we can allocate the Nadir's Adrenaline, uh, which provides three charges every three seconds for our flask. This is very useful if you like bossing and you want to sustain your flask uh, while playing against the bosses. But this is mostly popular in Standard, where Magic Find builds are more powerful, for League play, I recommend getting Nature's Boon. Uh, magic Utility Flasks applied to you have 30% increased effect, and this will apply to our Gold Flask, uh, which increases our rarity by a lot, and to our Quicksilver Flask, making us uh, much more mobile. Um, finally, we have the Watcher's Eye. Uh, my personal recommendation for high budget is getting the base crit chance for hatred and some crit multi uh, while affected by precision. Now, this value was nerfed a while ago. Now you can get up to 30%. This is a legacy value. Uh, uh, for the large cluster jewels, uh, 
when we have a high budget, we can plan some. We can, we can plan to craft some large clusters with twelve passives, and uh, uh, the best mods that we can look for are first, thirty five percent increased effect, life, attack speed, elemental chaos resistances, and attributes. These large cluster jewels are the dear place to uh, provide the resistances we lack and to add a lot of damage to, and survivability to our build. I really like them. The medium cluster jewels stays the same for high budget and the small cluster jewels you can get rid of. Uh, even though uh, if you want to run all the arboras, I think that you can keep one of the small clusters. Um, uh, one last mention that I uh, forgot to put in these slides uh, is Inspired Learning. Uh, I'm sorry, a Natural Instinct. Uh, you can also use Inspired Learning. A Natural Instinct um, allocated grants the following. Allocated small passive skills in radius grant nothing and grants all bonuses of unallocated small passive skills in radius. Now, as you can see, this is very profitable to use because you can get up to 8% elemental resistances along with some increased evasion rating, uh, a lot of critical strike chance, some accuracy and attack speed, 6% uh, maximum life from these two notables, some dexterity, uh, and also some frenzy charge duration and evasion rating for frenzy charge. Um, in other situations, you can swap a natural instinct for uh, like inspired learning. If you allocate four passive notables here, uh, you can get the ability to steal uh, one rare modifiers from rare monsters. Uh, this is basically a mini headhunter effect. So you can choose between the two, but for the end game, in my opinion, a natural instinct is the best option. Let's go to the flask. The first obvious flask we want to use is Dying Sun. Now, this uh, ruby flask comes with an incredibly powerful effect, skills fire two additional projectiles. Uh, if you can scale this enough with the flask effect reaching 50%, you can go up to three additional projectiles. This is something you can do more easily with Pathfinder, but it is also possible with uh, with did I uh, with a lot of investment. Then we have the Divination Distillate Flask. This is another corner piece of the build. Uh, basically, Divination Distillate provides up to 30% increase rarity of items found and up to 12% quantity of items found. Um, not only that, it, all, it also provides plus 50% elemental resistances, uh, which is very, very helpful, especially if you're farming Eldritch Altars, which can provide some uh, negative, uh, some reductions to your resistances. I personally don't recommend to quality these flasks because you want their cover of life and mana to be as low as possible, because as you will see, to permanently sustain the divination distillate, you need to have not full life and not full mana, I one of the two. And so regaining too much mana or life means you might risk to uh, shut the effect of the flask, uh, to, to stop the effect of the flask. So yeah, this requires a bit of, uh, of planning in order to make it up 100% uh, of the time. Then we have Cinder Swallow Urn. Uh, this is another very powerful flask which provides Onslaught and uh, also one of these three modifiers here. It, the most powerful is recover 3% life when you kill an enemy during effect. This is basically a mini Legacy Winter effect. This really resembles Legacy Leech, in my opinion. Legacy Instant Leech, in my opinion. Then you can get Availed modifiers. Uh, the best one that you can possibly get, in my opinion, is 30% item rarity or 50% uh, critical strike chance. That's also very good. As for the remaining two flasks, those would be Magic. We have an Alchemist Gold Flask of the Dove uh, with increased effect and attack speed. Then we got the Alchemist Quicksilver Flask of the Cheetah. This is an evergreen. 
Uh, this is basically the best option to make you very, very, very fast. 40% uh, movement speed uh, for the Quicksilver Flask and 14% movement speed during effect, which also can scale with your flask effect. So this would be the end of uh, my gear showcase. And now I think it is time to go to the, uh, to the skill gems and to the passive tree. Now, uh, let's first check the passive tree. Now, we are uh, rangers, so we start from the uh, right side of the tree and uh, we start with some dexterity passive points and we go up there, we get some life from Blood Siphon, uh, coordination, treachery, uh, then we get this life here, Blood Drinker is very powerful, and here we have uh, the life mastery, we can get plus 50 life, and we go up there, and as I mentioned before, we can use the Lioness Fall combo here with the Dagger Wheel. Going down, we can put the first cluster along with a small cluster with the uncompromising or uh, electric cutting presence, um, mana reservation efficiency notable. We go down there uh, and we can get some cool stuff like Earth Seeker, Survivalist. Herbalism and the seven life mastery is very very powerful. Ten percent. I'm sorry, this is wrong. You can get fifteen percent increased maximum life if there are no life modifiers on equipped body armor. Now in this case we use grids and brace. It doesn't have life modifiers, so this will proc. We have the very powerful wheel for bows with the increases and the reductions to projectile spilled also apply to damage with bows. This is very, very good. And this synergizes quite well with this not with this wheel here, projectile damage, projectile damage and speed, and the long shot with 30% increased projectile speed. Projectiles gain damage as they travel further, dealing up to 60% increased damage with its targets. And this synergizes very well with far shot, um, Basically, projectile attack it's deal 20% less damage to targets at the start of their movement, dealing up to 60% more damage to targets as their projectile travels faster. Now, the issue is that we are very fragile as a low budget build, so we don't want to stay in, uh, in melee. Uh, we don't want to stay too close to the enemies. We want to shoot from afar, and so we can get the maximum benefit from running long shot and far shot. Lethality is another extremely powerful passive notable. Projectile attack skills have 15% crit chance and 30% crit multi. Now, if you have uh, enough passive notables, this is only a passive tree for level 94 character, but if you are level 100, you can use natural remedies, 20% increased flask effect direction, duration, 10% increased flask effect, and remove maim and hinder when you use a flask, which helps a little bit. Um, the mastery isn't anything special, but I think that the recover 4% of life when you use a flask could be very nice. Then we have marked for death, calling strike against marked enemy. As you see, uh, we will we use sniper's mark, so this is very handy to deal with rares. And here is the other large cluster with Feed the Fury and Martial Prowess. Uh, along with the medium clusters with precise retaliation and pressure points. That's pretty much it for the uh, passive tree. Uh, I think uh, this is a very fine tree, but I'm sure that there is room for some variations if you have a uh, higher level than 94. For example, it would be cool to get this basic jewel socket here. That said, Let's go to the uh, skill gems. Now, uh, we want to get our tornado shot. Uh, tornado shot is one of the most popular skills for bow builds. Uh, then we have awakened elemental damage with tax support, awakened attack added cold damage, lesser multiple projectile support. Uh, this is useful to get two additional projectiles, but if somehow you can get more than that, but maybe by corrupting with a Wind Reaper with plus one, plus one bow, or by any other mean, like if you are already if you already have higher level, you can get the multi-shot. 
uh, you may decide to swap it for something else like critical damage support gem. Then we have inspiration support, which is very useful because it deals 5% uh, more elemental damage per inspiration charge. It reduces the mana cost of our tornado shot, and we are already mana served, as you can see, so that's very, very useful. And uh, you also get 8% increased critical strike chance per inspiration charge. Finally, we have Trinity support. Now, Trinity is a very powerful support gem because it grants 3% more elemental damage per 5 or your lowest resonance. Now, whenever you deal damage uh, with a certain element, you gain some resonance of uh, opposite elements. Now, it's a bit complicated, but to stay as simple as possible, your objective is to deal damage of two different elements. That would be cold damage and lightning damage in our case. If you deal enough damage of these two types, you can unlock the full potential of the Trinity support, gaining 50 resonance for each element and therefore a lot of them, a lot of more elemental damage multiplier. So uh, this was the clearing setup and also the single target setup. Tornado Shop is exceptionally good because um, it can be useful for both case scenarios. You don't need a barrage setup if you play Tornado Shot. Uh, it is important to note that Tornado Shot Enchant on Helmet is very important to the skill, but you can play the build even without that. Although this, in my opinion, is mm, your number one priority. As for the Aura setup, we can use Arrow Device. Uh, air and light and support level 4 possibly, but level 3 is just fine, you don't need level 4 early on. You can use Wrath, you can use uh, Blood Rage, you don't need the Anomalous Tag. Uh, the Anomalous quality effect basically grants you the ability to gather Frenzy Charge when you hit a unique enemy, but you also can use the Mark Mastery. Uh, which provides 10% chance to gain a frenzy charge when you eat your marked enemy. To be honest, this is much more reliable than the anomalous blood rage. Then we got determination, and you might wonder why determination in our build. As I mentioned, uh, tornado shot uh, builds are extremely fragile, especially early on. Determination provides the extra additional armor that is very useful uh, to avoid dying by physical damage. Um, this really helps out. Then we have Petrified Blood. This is a very special aura, uh, which basically um, prevents you from uh, getting too much damage altogether. Life recovery, other than flasks, cannot recover life to above low life. Low life would be 50% in this case. And uh, when taking damage from eats, 40% of life loss below half-life is prevented, which means is not uh, the damage is not taken instantly, but uh, the 75% of the life loss that way is prevented in the next 4 seconds. So basically what it does, it, it takes the damage that you get instantly and it converts it to... Uh, a damage over time over four seconds but in those four seconds you can basically recover your life using your cinder swallow urn by killing enemies you recover 3 percent of life whenever you kill an enemy so in my opinion this is a very nice combo between the petrified blood setup and the flask uh, skills also gain a base life cost equal to 40 percent of base mana cost while not on low life we are most of the time on low life, so this is not a real concern. But the highest potential for Petrified Blood is being able to uh, take a 100, uh, provide a 100% uptime on the Divination Distillate. Since we, are not, we have not full life, since we are always missing some life here because we can't recover it, we can keep uh, our Divination Distillate activated until we don't reach the uh, the life reservation threshold. Now, the fact is that whenever you're mapping, uh, you're constantly getting hit, so you're always below the low life mark, and your divination distillate will be always active. 
Uh, if you're not getting it that much, you can also use the Blood Rage. It will consume your life, as you can see, and you can keep your Divination Distillate up I by just, just uh, proccing your Divination Distillate. Uh, this is a very smart way to keep a balance of the genning effect of your blood rage and regenning effect of your flask or of your uh, hybrid uh, divination distillate flask. Uh, then let's go to the setup in our gloves. Here we have the uh, arrogance setup. Basically, we will reserve uh, the upper 50% of our life with precision and with the defiance banner, which is good in combination with determination auras. Um, this banner is good for survivability, it grants 25% increased armor and evasion rating, nearby enemies also have reduced critical strike chance, and whenever you place your banner, uh, uh, enemies taunted uh, deal, also deal 15% less damage, which is quite a lot. Uh, here we have a slot for an additional gem, which would be Molten Shell. You can bind, bind this, uh, um, this gem to your left click, so you can always activate uh, the Molten Shell buff while walking. Um, this, is a ver this is very low mana cost, just 12, and uh, it grants quite a lot of armor, which scales with your determination. Uh, now let's go to the mark on it setup. It's very simple mark on it plus sniper's mark. Sniper's mark uh, matches salt the projectiles with hit course enemies split towards four additional targets, which is very good for your clear speed. And uh, it is also very good to target uh, rare monsters uh, with a 39% increased damage from projectile heals. Then we have cast on death plus portal and that's basically a lifesaver because on low budget you are gonna die, uh, especially if you're playing solo. Uh, with an hour bot, you, your solubility is much, much better, but if you're playing solo, in my opinion, having this setup can make your quality of life much, much better. Finally, the helmet setup, cast one damage taken with steel skin. Again, we need all the survivability we can find. This buff can take up to 2000 damage and 70% of damage from it is taken from the buff before life or energy shield. Also, buff grants immunity to bleeding, which is uh, a welcome addition. Finally, we have our movement skill, Divergent Dash and Anomalous Second Wind. You can use the non-alternative quality variant, but I think the alternative quality here provides very nice bonuses. In particular, Divergent Dash provides phasing after you activate the skill. And if you want to put this to an extreme, you can uh, link dash with enhance and get some extra quality to rise the number of seconds that you are facing. Um, Anomalous Second Wind provides 10% reduced cooldown recovery rate, but plus one cooldown use, which I think is very handy. As you see, we can have three charges for dash uh, and we can zoom very fast between packs. I think this is very, very nice. So uh, that would be it for the low budget variant. I want to take a look at the tree and the gems of the high budget variant of the build. Uh, I'm sorry, I took the uh, wrong character here. So basically when you are high budget, you get access to the tree, the massive trade of hope. Uh, which is very, very nice. Instead of the medium cluster jewels, you get these nice 12 cluster jewels. That I already mentioned that. And uh, uh, there is also a nice addition for the medium cluster, which is the spike concussion, which I didn't mention before. This is basically uh, passive notables that provides the alchemist genius when you use a flask. Alchemist Genius increases flask charges gained by 20% and effect of flask by 10% for 4 seconds. I think this is uh, a very welcome addition. Uh, you can add the natural remedies for additional 10% increased effect. And uh, well, well, that's pretty much it. The difference is that we also take the upper side of the tree so that we can unlock the third uh, cluster jewel. Not many differences overall. Let's check the gems. Uh, 
we can use we can put the aura setup in our bow and the tornado shot setup in our body armor now this is my standard gear so uh you don't need to watch this um my actual body armor is uh, somewhere over there uh, give me a sec yes this would be my body armor for league play as you see there is the level 20 team rarity the applying additional curse and attacks have crit strike chance and a bit of crafted life anyway the setup would be anomalous tornado shot which converts 69 percent of physical damage to a random element uh, we deal physical damage but we convert it to elemental uh, awakened elemental damage is the same as before Awakened Fork, in my opinion, is very nice to add more rear. Um, Trinity Sport, that's the same as before. Awakened vicious, vicious Projectiles is useful for any build that deals them physical damage. Um, and then we have Item Quantity Support for Standard, but for League we should use um, uh, simply a damaging uh, gem, such as insp Inspiration Support or Increased Critical Damage. As for the auras, we have Hatred, Divergent Purity of Ailments to get us that immunity to all elemental ailments, Herald of Purity, Petrified Blood, uh, Divergent Determination, and Awakened Enlightened to fit all of those auras just fine. Uh, in my opinion, Divergent Determination is good because it provides uh, you and then by allies with 2% of evasion rating as extra armor. Anomalous Petrified Blood is useful because um, when taking damage from its plus 5% of life loss below half life is prevented, uh, and plus 60% of life loss prevented this way is lost over 4 seconds. So basically, you're gonna get more life over time, more, more life damage over time in the next 4 seconds, but you're also going to tank bigger hits. Uh, with this alternative quality option. Um, Divergent Purity of Ailments grants a little bit of Elemental Resistance Penetration. Uh, as for the other gems, we basically get the alternative quality of Precision with 2% increased damage, Anomalous Arrogance to improve our life reservation efficiency, and Anomalous Defense Banner to have uh, those 5% uh, increase armor and evasion rating. Sniper's Mark and uh, Mark on it are pretty much the same, but Divergent Mark on it provides some extra damage against marked enemies. And then we can go back to the 5% increase attack speed, normal quality, blood rage. Uh, finally, the helmet, uh, we can use Anomalous Molten Shell. Buff can take additional damage equal to 5% of your armor. Anomalous Enduring Cry, uh, which is a tech I really like, because Enduring Cry is basically a life potion on steroids. Um, what happens when you use it is that you will regenerate 2000 life over one second, and every time we have a gen effect, uh, at the gen ground, you can just use Enduring Cry, and since it's linked with Anomalous Second Wind, you will have three charges, and this is very, very useful in my opinion. The only drawback is that it costs a lot of mana, up to 40 mana, which is uh, a bit tough. And that would be it also for the uh, eye and uh, gem damage setup. And the gear that you see here is uh, a little spoiler for you, is uh, basically the gear I use for my uh, high-end Magic Find standard build, which will be covered in our next video, uh, which will be about um, how to scale Magic Find builds in standard uh, to an extreme. In standard, you can use a lot of legacy gear, and that can bring to great results and with proper investment, you will be even able to farm bosses. Overall, I think that Magic Find builds, both low budget and high budget, can shine in any league. And uh, as a low budget, I personally think you should play with an Arbot friend uh, because you're going to be too slow, uh, especially at the start. For high budget, you can totally play uh, even as a solo player, but again, 
playing with a party is much more fun and much more profitable. So I just prepared a map for a showcase of the Magic Find low budget build. Uh, we are using some very deadly content such as Breach, Legion and uh, Elder Scarab. Uh, some safer content would be Harbinger and Abysses because you can very easily shoot from afar. But I want to give a realistic look at what build looks like under stress. Uh, we are also using some sextants here, breaches, gloom shrine, which can help with uh, our damage and survivability, uh, chayula, which is combination with breaches, and then legion encounter. I wanted to focus on breach because this is one of the new strategies for the league, and I think it is cool to give you a little overview or of what this kind of farming looks like. So let's give it a try. First of all, you will notice that the clear speed is rather good, that and that's because Vengeant Cascade is really, really a powerful mechanic uh, from for a passive notable. Basically, all your projectiles go back to you, and your clear speed gets really, really good. We also have a Ritual here. Make sure to kite and stay as far as possible from rare monsters. My mana is gone. Because they can be very, very tanky. They deal massive amount of damage at times. And now let's try a breach. Whenever you see a shrine and you are under stress, you can just go for that. Remember to dodge uh, a lot of that chaos damage. Uh, that really hurts. Clasp hand are a very important part of your profit, together with rare monsters. Chayula's Clasp Hand are the best, they can drop up to 10 Bridge Splinters, in my opinion. So that was decent, not perfect, but again, this is the budget variant of the build, I will show you later the high budget variant and how it looks like in-game. In Clearly Legion is not too hard. I think we did decently here. Proximity shields are a bit annoying at times because they force you into um, a, into a melee scenario, uh, which is really dangerous for us. But overall, I think that we are fine. Uh, bosses are quite dangerous, so we want to stay as far as possible from them. Uh, you can kill them very slowly. Here is a good drop. Magic find works apparently. Oh, a couple Chayulas. Maybe we don't have time to kill those. Yeah, I mean, that was too late. But with the high budget magic find build, we would certainly have killed them. This is jet, or with an hour bot maybe. If you can't afford the high budget build, just find yourself an hour bot and that will do it. The build is kind of slow in this budget state, uh, but loot is pretty good. And uh, whenever you toss in a Gilded Relic Warriors card or a Gilded Divination card, the profit is gonna, uh, is gonna be consistent, in my opinion. Okay, those are some nice Scarabs. You I'm want to, to just yet. grab the loot after, because you want to abuse the Rampage as much as possible. Essences are a bit hard to kill, but as you see, uh, for random essences that you find in the wild, that's not too hard. Uh, for sure the build cannot handle the bigger T7 essences. This, oh, this was unfortunate because we took the shrine and immediately died afterwards. Uh, due to our rare monsters. Dying as this kind of build is absolutely physiological. Uh, you can't pretend to always stay alive. It's unrealistical. And 
I think that the most important thing is to use custom deck portal and use your portals are uh, as defensive liars basically. If you want to level up, you definitely should consider some legion farming. This build is super hard to level up as is, especially as a solo player. This should be the last bridge of the map. The point is, don't be too fast in grabbing those clasps and make sure that you are in a safe position before you open them. For example, now I'm taking some risk. Okay, there is something that is shooting at us. Okay, that's good. 12 Splinter of Shayula, that's quite a lot. Let's see how this build handles a boss without life plus. We are taking a lot of damage, but we can still kite a little bit. It's very slow, but as you can see, manual dodge is OP. And we did it. So yeah, that was the magic find build low budget in a real game scenario. So now let's let's give a showcase of the magic find build on high budget on a T16 map with 20% delirious and the same sextants modifiers. Tornado shot uh, can give a lot of damage and a lot of clear speed. We shall see how it goes. As you see, the experience is very smooth, but the issue is that if you can encounter a unique monster at the start of the map, that can uh, cause some major troubles. You want to make sure to get some Edunter stacks before engaging with the hardest monsters. This is really important in my opinion. Rare monsters are very easy to deal with though. You don't need to stay out of the range anymore. And as soon as you get your head under charges, you are pretty much invulnerable. The build at this state becomes very fun and enjoyable to play. Sometimes you will certainly die, but again, this is something that you can live with. And as you see, you can also start using the altars uh, in a very, very, very simple way. These are the new globes that were just released in 3.21. As you see, we can deal with a lot of content, uh, just so smooth and nice. And this is solo play in a league. Uh, this is something that you really couldn't expect from your random bow build. But I think that Magic Find right now is in a very, very good position. And uh, this is what your game, ex your end game experience will look like. You'll basically blast through maps and have a lot of fun. If you play with an Arbot, you are much safer. You are going even faster and the profit will be so good. This is a level 100 character, so keep that in mind. Uh, again, you want to level up your character outside of, uh, outside of your uh, of your maps that you play alone. You want to play on uh, like Legion. 
you you might play also uh, as a sole players in some safe content. Legion is also okay to play alone as long as you know what you're doing. There isn't any content that this build cannot clear inside a map. The build is also decent against bosses, but I wouldn't call this build a bosser at all. Uh, it is clearly a stretch. It's boss viable, but not really suitable for bosses, in my opinion. That's a different story for standard high budget. In that case, the build becomes a real beast due to legacy gear. And that would be it for this map. Nothing much else to clear. And yes, we die at the, at the end to some random explosions, but I think it's completely fine. And you get the idea of the power level of the build once uh, it is finally um, it is finally unleashed in all of its power. So yeah, that's the showcase uh, for my magic find build. Uh, I wanted to make this video for a very long time and I'm happy to finally share it with you. I hope you have a nice league in 3.21 and see you in the next video.